The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome. It is Pentecost. 50 days after Easter is the day of Pentecost. Uh, it's the final day of the Easter season. It's thought of as the birthday of the Christian church when the Holy Spirit was uh, descended down upon the apostles, um, making their witness to the risen Lord, um, enabling it, making it efficacious, making it winsome. Um, and, uh, and compelling, and the Holy Spirit is still in that business with his church today. Um, I'd like to point out um, the insert in your bulletin, the, this one, Joy to the World. It is our national convention of LCMS churches this summer. Um, uh, uh, Steve Zilmer is representing uh, the laity of our circuit and, and Pastor... Um, 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 Douglas Bergelin is the pastoral uh, delegate, um, and they'll be going to Florida in the summer. Part of the tradition is that there's a national gathering or in-gathering for various missions of the church. Uh, we're going to have that today, participating uh, with churches all across the land as part of LCMS. This uh, will go towards work among new immigrants and college students in abandoned urban, urban areas and uh, with the planting of new churches in strategic places. So thank you for your generosity on that. We have two new beautiful windows installed this, this last week. One is the Trinity on, on your left and the other uh, kind of tucked behind the organ a little bit is the light of the world. Um, I didn't know what those four dots represented be, uh, beside the Father's hand until yesterday in Bible study we learned that four is the number of creation. Why? North, south, east, west. It's all God's creative work. So that was kind of an aha moment for me in, in Bible study. Um, uh, the, International students and scholars coming June 22nd, 23rd, that's the weekend of the church picnic. If you are at all interested in serving as a host family, please give Rich Moen a call. VBS starts tomorrow. We have some 80 plus kids already signed up and there's usually a surge towards the end. If you haven't registered your child, you can do so online today or uh, just show up um, before 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. A uh, few items are still needed in terms of supplies. Sign up for that is in the kitchen next to the kitchen downstairs. Um, I think that's all I have. Divine service setting one today. Opening hymn, one that I've always liked. Come down, O love divine, 501.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. It's called an ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day, by the same Spirit, to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this, first, for this day of Pentecost is found in Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because their Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them, and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocked and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall, see, shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and on my female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. 
And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you,
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text from John 14, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. In the name of Jesus, dear friends. Talk is cheap. Perhaps you've heard that before. It's easier to say something sometimes than it is to do it. It's pretty easy to say to someone, I love you, but living in a loving relationship with them can be challenging at times. It's easy to say that you love God, but talk is cheap. You know it. Other people know it. Jesus knows it as well. Note here that our Lord does not say, if you love me, then say so. He rather says right before our text, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And in today's lesson, if anyone loves me, he will keep my words. Now this is not a New Testament restating of the Ten Commandments, do all of these things and everything will be fine. In fact, the New Testament warns against that thinking, thinking and teaching. In the letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul said, Are you so foolish, after beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? So what was Jesus referring to when he said, You will keep my commandments, or you will keep my words? Well, the word keep that's used here is not the word for obey, but rather a word that describes keeping a treasure, holding on to something that is precious. Not simply checking off a list of do's and don'ts, but cherishing, guarding, guarding something that you hold in high esteem. Loving God and cherishing and guarding His word as sacred are all tied together like faith and works. You can't have one without the other. Because you love Him, you strive to honor Him by treasuring His Word. So often we fall short here. We get distracted by all kinds of things going on. We neglect devotion to His Word, which is supposed to be a lamp for our feet and a light for our path as we try to do things on, in our own way, in our own time. We do not hunger and thirst for righteousness as we ought. We do not love our neighbor as ourselves, and the list goes on and on. We wring our hands with worry as though somehow God is not aware of what's going on in our life or is powerless to do anything about it. Even though His Word promises He will be with us, He knows that the only way that we can begin to keep His commandments or His words holy and sacred is if we receive help. And so He sends another helper, the Holy Spirit, who helps us in our weaknesses, it says, who brings to remembrance the words of Jesus, and who remains not only with us, but in us forever. Jesus did not just say that he loves us, but he has showed us. He has kept us from being destroyed by sin, by taking our sins upon himself when he died on the cross. He has kept us from being destroyed by death, by rising from the dead and promising to us eternal life in Him. And He keeps us today by forgiving us all of our sins and strengthening us through His Word. In all of life, it really is not difficult to serve or to care about or to give ourselves to that which we really love. It seems to me that when one says that they love the Lord, but is then living in such a way that he knows to be not in accord with the Lord's teachings or precepts 
or commands that the real problem most likely is that that one is not treasuring the word, not holding it close, not, not keeping it as sacred. In the chapters before us, 13 through 17 of John's Gospel, we find uh, the passion discourses or the teachings of Jesus. He was in the upper room, it's on the night before his betrayal, he had washed the disciples' feet. He said to them, I've given you an example that you should do just as I have done. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master. You are to serve. You are not simply to be served. He then talked about his betrayal by Judas and Peter's denial, spoke of his departure. He would no longer be with them in the same way as he had been all these days years. He spoke of being glorified, of being only there for a little while longer, and then of going where they cannot go, at least for now. And as they watched and listened, they were troubled. So Jesus spoke to calm their troubled hearts in the words right at the beginning of John chapter 14. We read this, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Imagine places reserved in heaven, prepared by the Lord for them, for you, for me, for all who believe and trust in Christ Jesus. Imagine the assurance that one day they would be with him again in the fullness of glory and not only with him but with one another. These must have been comforting words to the disciples when they thought about the future just as they're comforting words for us. But that's the future. What about now? What about today? What about this week? How are we going to make it until that great reunion in heaven takes place? Both Thomas and uh, Philip expressed their doubts, their fears, their, their lack of understanding of what Jesus was talking about. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, if we don't remember anything else about the lesson this weekend, remember this. The way to the Father, the way to heaven, is not gained through following a particular philosophy or belonging to a particular group or organization or by gaining a certain amount of knowledge or keeping a bunch of rules. The way to the Father, the way to heaven, is a person. I am the way. Jesus said, believe in him, trust in him, hold him and his word sacred. As he spoke to Thomas, Philip spoke up and said, Lord, show us the Father and it will be enough. And Jesus responded, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Both Thomas and Philip were so concerned about Jesus leaving. Without his physical presence, what would they do? You know, how could they go on? Our Lord responded to them and reminded them that even though he would be physically gone, he would still be continually present. He said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, forever, even the Spirit of truth. Of course, a reference to the Holy Spirit. And he reminds them, you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You know, we note here that the Holy Spirit comes. He comes to them and comes to us 
as a gift comes as a result of a promise, not as a result of one's own efforts or virtues or sufferings or prayers or strivings. And note also that he comes to be with them, with us, forever. He's not here one moment and then gone the next. He comes through the word to strengthen, to comfort, to guide, to empower, to bring the very presence of Jesus into our lives. It's written in verse 26 of our gospel lesson, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. And notice, bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. In these verses, we have the promise of God's continual presence with us. Listen again to the, to the last part of verse 23. My Father will love him, that is the one who treasures my words, who holds them sacred. And we, that is the Father and I, will come to him and make our home with him. Now when we connect those words to the ones that I just read in verse 17, you know him, that is the Holy Spirit, for he dwells with you and will be in you. This is nothing less than a promise that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will abide in and with his disciples, in and with us, and take up residence in us. That's what home here means. It's a dwelling. It's a place where one settles in. You and I, loved by the Lord, as we abide in His Word, as we hold it sacred in our lives, we have the promise that the Holy Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, settles in to our hearts, makes His home in us. And it's His presence in and with us that then enables us to desire and to keep his commandments his words and to hold them sacred it's an amazing truth one that brings real abiding peace to our souls to our hearts to our minds my peace Jesus said to his disciples I leave with you my peace I give you not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Here he defines his peace as different from that offered by the world. When you think of that word peace, what comes to mind? Webster defines it as freedom from or the stopping of war or conflict or a treaty, an agreement, freedom from public disturbance, an undisturbed state of mind. You know, so often, the peace offered by the world involves separating people from one another, or groups from one another, or it involves a forced harmony on the basis of a set of laws or rules with no real change taking place within the heart. Such peace is not permanent, and it's fragile, it's easily shattered, it's broken. As promises are broken, agreements are not met. On the other hand, the peace offered by our Lord comes even in the midst of turmoil and uncertainty, loss of job, volatile stock market, wondering what I'm going to do now that I have graduated, or some other difficulty that must be faced in my daily life. The Spirit brings to mind, I'm with you always, the words of Jesus, even to the end of the age. The peace offered by our Lord comes even when things happen to us, that, around us, that are beyond our control. Bad weather, storms, fires, floods, all kinds of pestilences. I'm with you, even there, till the end of the age. The peace offered by our Lord 
quiets our hearts and comforts our spirits even when the medical diagnosis is not what we had hoped for or prayed for or when we're separated from a loved one because of circumstances or even by death. The peace offered by our Lord does not involve some temporary escape from existing circumstances, but rather his continuous abiding presence in the midst of those circumstances, whatever they might be. It's a peace that truly knows and trusts that no matter what's going on, all is well with my soul. It's a peace that moves Paul to exclaim at the end of Romans 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing in life, nothing in death. Nothing can separate us from his love in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, the Bible often describes our Lord with the image of a bird that shelters her young under her wings. God's love in Christ is like that. It covers us, it surrounds us, it protects us against the darkness of this world. I think most of us can identify with quiet moments of the night when we might lie on our beds, staring into the darkness, wondering about all kinds of things. Perhaps experiencing a bit of anxiety or, or concern about what's happening in our lives or what's happening in the lives of our loved ones. The psalmist reminds us in Psalm 63, On my bed I remember you, Lord. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I will sing in the shadow of your wings. God's loving care is our shield. It is written, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night nor the arrow that flies by day. Jesus says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. It comes from the presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit dwelling with, with us and within us. You know, moms, dads, children, husbands, wives, grandparents, workers, pastors, whatever your station in life, as you live out your lives in a multitude of circumstances, may the peace of the Lord, which truly is above all understanding, guard your hearts and minds and focus them on Christ whose continual presence brings abiding peace and strengthens us that we may walk in his ways, guarding, treasuring, holding his word as precious. Trust in the Lord, dear friends, with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. That's his promise to you and to me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with the confession of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made. Be
resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In our prayers, we pray for those who are ill, for Lori Reichert, Mary Reichert, Rick Allerman, Laverne Neunfeldt, Janan Leemacher, Amber Bartles, recovering from surgery, and for Gretchen Martin. Let us pray. Lord of mercy, for our good you dispersed the nations, but in love you have gathered those whom you had scattered, that in Jesus Christ every division may be bridged and every nation united in faith. Help us to be faithful in speaking your word and showing the healing power of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of power, according to your promise, you gave your spirit to your your sons and daughters and placed in them the fire of your love for the sake of those who do not know you. Give to your church passion for your work and raise up those whom you call to be successors to the apostles in proclaiming your word and teaching the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of might, preserve your people from their enemies. Bring peace to the nations. Prosper the cause of life and bless our leaders, especially our president, governor, congress, legislator, and all judges and magistrates. Give them a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all, with a heart of mercy for the weak and vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of compassion, forget not the sick and the suffering, and grant them healing according to your will. We name before you especially Lori, Mary, Rick, Laverne, Janan, Amber, and Gretchen. Give them confidence that you know their need and will well supply them with all they need to endure to the day of your coming, when all affliction will end and you will grant the perfect consummation to us and all who have loved your appearing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, give to those who weep the joy of your presence, to those who mourn the hope of the resurrection, and to those who are alone and afraid the consolation of your spirit, that they may not despair nor be overcome by affliction. Help them to know the joy of your presence through our love and care. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.